Let's bring in someone who knows these districts. He's just looking at these. He names every. He knows everyone. <laughs> Who's running in all of them? Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, so let me get your big picture take first as you look at this, because you look at all of these things on a very granular level. You first want to look at the environment. You want to look at the environment because everybody's running at the same time. First of all, if you go back at the same time this presidential four years ago, the generic ballot was plus six for Democrats. To now it's plus one. If you look at the Gallup poll, it doesn't ask you who you're going to vote for. It asks who you identify with, the Republican or Democrat Party. The Republican Party won 48 to 45. Now, why is that important? Republican Party has never won and had the majority. So the environment is much better. If you look at the movement of President Trump, he is improving each and every day we're finding it. And when he improves in a presidential one, it also raises the boats of everybody else. I'm watching in congressional races where president had lost by 13 points in California, he's now tied. One that he lost by 10, that he's up by one. So that really helps everybody else. There can't really be a wave in the House because of redistricting, much fewer seats, whoever wins the majority. Now, it's easier for Republicans to win seats in the House this cycle than the last two cycles, but something the Democrats have done this cycle much better, they have raised a lot more money. Mm. We used to raise more money in them, they did more, so they're putting more races in play than had been in the past. But we redistrict North Carolina, Republicans pick up three. We'll pick up the seat in Alaska. Then if you look in Wisconsin, or if you look in Michigan, Slotkin left and ran for the Senate. Right. Tom Barrett will pick that one up. And then you got Paul Young up above, killed his seat, who left. You look at- All right, well, I, I hesitate to ask you this question because I, I know it probably brings back bad memories for you. <laughs> yes. But the midterm 2022, you were very, you know, be, were a ton of fundraising. You were all over the state all over the country, what, do you, what did you learn from that experience when you look at this midterm race and how optimistic are you? Would you put a number on how many seats you think that Republicans can pick up now? Well, you're not going to pick up uh, 10. You're not going to pick up seven. If you could pick up five, that changes the whole world because... On top of the... On current. top of the majority. Well, first of all, you want to keep the majority, all right? You want President Trump to win because that changes the whole direction. Republicans are going to win the Senate, but they're not going to win the Senate so large. If they're sitting at 52, there's not a lot of difference between 52 and 59 because Let of 60. Let me ask you about the Senate for quickly. You know, where do you see movement in the Senate races? Because I think most people look at West Virginia. They say that's going to go Republican. That's gone. Um, Montana, Sheehy is way ahead. Which ones are sort of piquing your interest right now as potential that could get to 52 or 53? Okay, what you want to look at the history of the Senate. So anytime a presidential lasts 70 races for the Senate, they follow directly how they voted for president, except one. That was in Maine, where Collins won but still voted against Trump. So you first do go to Montana. Trump's going to win that by 20 points. We pick that one up. You then go to Ohio. Trump's going to win it by eight. That's still going to be close, but we can win there. Then you look to open seats like Michigan. That's a very competitive race today, but I'll tell you the one people aren't talking about. Yeah, Wisconsin. Nobody's really talking about it, but that looks really good. And one of our very best candidates is McCormick in Pennsylvania. And he has been trending every single week against Casey. And this is where you know we're getting close. If you look at the Pennsylvania and Wisconsin seat, those two Democrat incumbents are now running ads that they worked with President Trump. You would have thought they yeah, supported Trump. we just talked Trump. about that. Casey's putting out an ad about how he, where he aligns with Trump. Yes. Alyssa Slotkin, I believe, did the same thing. Um, it is... That uh, means they're in trouble. Or Sheriff Brown, I think it was, yeah. uh, did the same thing. Um, do you see a lot of split ticket voters, except for Maine? You know, um, split ticket maybe in the presidential. What the Republicans need to do is bring, make sure they're voting Republican on... Um, the congressional as well. The one unique thing about President Trump is he brings a coalition of Republicans and independents and even Democrats because he identifies on issues that aren't really normally that people are looking at, especially when it comes to union worker. I mean, the interesting part I watched today Democrats are now having internal discussions. Would Joe Biden been better to stay on the ticket than Kamala? If you look at Pennsylvania, that that answer is easy. Because I, I mean, if Kamala said, Harris loses on election night, that will be one of the biggest topics of discussion. Be, Would Joe Biden have, have won? It, it's so hard to imagine. I mean, when you go back to that debate, 
yes. on June 27th. There was just no way that, that he was going to be able to. Yeah, okay, but if you're going to replace him with Kamala the best, and would well, you. Well, then you're going to have the conversation about we should have had a mini primary, right? You're going to hear Clyburn and Pelosi say, should have been a mini primary. Should, but should've Pelosi been. is the one who pushed for Kamala to pick Waltz. Had she picked Shapiro, this would be a different race today, too. So many mistakes, and Kamala's history is always starts really strong and falls down. It looks like she peaked at the debate. So who wins the presidential race? President Trump. And how many seats does the House pick up? I think this, the House seat, it's either Republicans are in the majority by 10 or less. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again before the big night. Thank you, former Appreciate Speaker it. of the House.